Hello, my name is Martin Harold. I'm from Wageningen University. And together with my colleagues, Nandika Zenbazar and Lin Lin Lee, we have been putting together a quick overview on how to choose a land cover product, a map product for any specific application. So you can put yourself in the seat of a user and you think about from the variety of options you have for land cover, what would be the one best suited for your purposes. There's a large variety of land cover map products available and it is quite tricky for any user to understand which one is the most suitable one. And there are several aspects that need to be considered. What type of land cover map that is, what is the information about the spatial domain, what's the information about the temporal domain, what's about the thematic domains in terms of, for example, the legends, and also what's the quality of the products. And I will go through these various aspects in the following slides. There are, in general, different types of land cover maps. There's first, to the left, what's called a discrete land cover map, where you have specific classes, and these classes have also certain definitions. For example, forests, or shrubs, or grasslands, croplands. Or you have what's also called fractional land cover maps, where the classes are basically percentages of a certain, for example, tree cover fraction. So you have a more of a depiction of tree cover density on the pixel level. Both types of products are available. And in fact, you have land cover products that have both discrete classification and a fractional land cover classification, as for example, the product of the Copernicus Global Land Cover Service, and the link is provided in this slide. In terms of the spatial domain, first of all, land cover maps are produced with different spatial extent. We have, on the one hand, global land cover maps that really have a consistent global representation of land cover, all the way to regional, for example, continental scale, or national land cover data sets. National land cover data sets, for example, have often very specific classes, important for specific country characteristics, and they tend to be also of higher quality, while the global maps really have the aim to be globally consistent and cover the variety of all land cover types that are available. The second aspect related to the spatial domain is the spatial resolution or the minimum mapping unit. So what is the level of detail, spatial detail, the map is providing? And you have maps at resolutions ranging from kilometers to a couple hundred meters to 30 or even to 10 meters or minimum map mapping units. For example, in the case of Corina, as a European land cover initiative of 25 or 5 hectares. In general, the trend is that more high-resolution land cover maps are getting more and more available and popular. So the first global land cover data set at 10 meter resolution using ESA's Sentinel data will be released in 2021. In terms of the temporal domain, this reflects on what date and what time frame the map is recovering. First of all, you have static or multi-temporal maps. So multi-temporal means you have multiple maps at multiple points in time. In terms of static maps, that is still the most common one. You have basically a representation commonly for one year or for a longer period. If you have multi-date maps, you have to consider what's called the temporal resolution. So are the maps produced yearly or every five years or longer? And of course, it's important what time period this is covering. So for example, the Copernicus Global Land Cover Service, CGLS, here in the slide, covers annual data from 2015 to 2019 at the moment with a plan to continue that, whereas the land cover CCI is really having a long-term perspective of going back even before 2000. Then you have also maps like World Cover, which have only a map, but then a 10-meter resolution for the year 2020. And you can see for the European Corina land cover, you have production of maps with longer time intervals, uh, but for specific years. Each map has a certain land cover legend, based on a classification system that define what the classes in the map represent. It is also possible that some maps have multiple legends based on different classification system, and that is because different users are using different types of land cover characterizations. So it's very important for anyone who wants to use a certain land cover map to understand really what are my needs when it comes to classes. Some Users might be interested in cropland or different cropland types. Some users might be interested only in forests. And some might be interested in all 20 or 25 
land cover types that are provided, for example, by global maps. Keep in mind that also there are different definitions. For example, different land cover products have different tree cover thresholds on what they would define as a forest. And again here, any user has to be aware of that and able to take that into account to choose the best product for their purposes. The land cover fractional maps provide a bit of flexibility because in terms of tree cover, for example, they provide a much more detailed characterization of that thematically and that by all a bit flexible to refer to multiple legends. Some land cover products also have a certain hierarchy. For example, what's shown here is the Carina land cover from the European side, which has on the broadest level only five classes. And then the more detailed you go, for example, you have artificial ser services, and then you have a further discrimination of artificial services into different land cover and land use types, and then have more detailed classes. And all of these classes, again, have definitions associated with them that are also well documented in the various descriptions of these land cover maps. A very important aspect of any use of these maps is their quality. It's good to know that it becomes relatively straightforward to produce land cover maps using available Earth observation data sources and available, for example, cloud computing solutions. But the question is, how good are they? And in particular, how good are they for a specific purpose? What's often provided, and map producers are strongly encouraged to do that, is several information about the map's accuracy. The first one is called what's called the overall accuracy. So that's how the global or the, the map overall has an accuracy of. Most global maps currently have an overall accuracy between 75 and 80 percent. And that, of course, depends also on the number of classes, because the more classes you have, the more discrimination you make, the harder it actually is to get a high overall accuracy. Also, if you only have one or two classes or three classes, it's quite easier to get a high accuracy. Besides the overall accuracy, it is very important for users to look at the class-specific accuracy because often users are using specific classes for their purposes. And class-specific accuracies are often provided as users and producers' accuracy. And if you find those being higher than 75%, that's usually a sign of a good quality depiction of that class. The higher, the better, of course. In existing land cover maps, what we often see is that classes like water, forests or bear are mapped with relatively high accuracies, while classes such as shrubs, wetlands or crops are often have low accuracy because it's quite challenging to discriminate them using available Earth observation data. But with more and more detailed Earth observation data becoming available, these accuracies are also expected to in increase. What is also often provided is not only the accuracy number itself, overall per class, but also a confidence interval, because these accuracy estimations are based or should be based on a statistically robust sampling design and give you an estimate of the overall accuracy and the confidence interval as well. So if you have an accuracy of 80 plus minus 2% confidence interval, that means the accuracy is between somewhere between 78 or 82%. So the quality of the land cover maps are or should be validated or provided by internationally accepted standards and guidelines that are available. They should be based on a probability sampling design. And it's very important that if you're particularly concerned about accuracy and what the quality of the map is, to look for maps that have used these kind of frameworks to do a proper accuracy analysis. So with all that information that is important to consider in terms of the spatial domain, the temporal domain, the thematic domain, the quality domain, and so on, where do, as a user, find all these informations? All good and well-documented land cover maps have what's called often a product user guide or product user manual or some kind of well-structured documentation that give you information about how the map was produced, what's the legend, the color coding, quality information, and also there should be a validation report or a scientific publication that you can use to assess that information and also compare it with other land cover maps to find the best one for your purposes.